Welcome back to another e-bike review, and this is a Sai Russia brand of bike. I've reviewed quite a few of them now, and they stand out for me when it compares to the other brands. They just seem to have a quality that's above everyone else. This model here is their Commodore. It's got a step-through frame, fat wheels again, so four inches wide, nice and spongy, and they're 20 inch the size of them. Now we have Dieslin 180 millimeter hydraulic disc brakes at the front. Very good brakes. Spoiler here, they're in the top category that I've tested out. They have some of the best braking performance that I've seen on a 20 inch sized rim bike. Now the front shock here has a motorcycle look to it, a little bit like a downhill front shock. It's got a huge amount of travel, about 100 millimeters that I have measured and it can be locked out. It has adjustable compression and adjustable preload too with it. It happens to be one of the best shocks, even though it has no brand name on it, apart from Cy Rush's own branding. Now it does have full suspension and the rear shock is a Go Sucky. <laughs> what a name for a shock, I know. GSX 200, so terrible brand name, but it's all right, the shock. Now it does have 30 millimeters of travel and it works better than some of the other rear shocks I've recently tested on 20 inch bikes. The Commodore does have plastic mud guards. If you jump down a curb, you may occasionally hear the rear at the front run slap up against the tire. The front headlight, this has a reflector incorporated in the design of it. It's bright enough to light the path up ahead of me just fine. It is not the brightest included light that I have seen for a headlight, but like I've said with other videos, it seems to be reasonable enough and does the job as you can see now at nighttime. So there is one thing I don't like with this bike and it doesn't really make any sense. Uh, why on earth did they put foldable pedals, these are no brand ones, on a bike like this, which is not foldable. So this is an area where they kind of cheaped out on the pedals and it's an easy fix to replace these. Now, why I don't like foldable pedals, you can see when you're able to put a pressure on these, they flex a little bit. And I had a very bad experience with some foldable pedals where they broke. They broke about here and they snapped straight off. My foot came off, slammed against the ground and I could have had a serious accident. Lucky there were no cars around. So that is why I'm going to be removing these pedals and I'm going to go with these, some Alloy Welgo known brand pedals that cost me, I think it was about 12 euros. I will replace these. They have zero flex, so I don't like these pedals at all. So Russia does have the cabling internal, so it's just this part here on the outside you will see, and then a little bit with the rear, but that's connecting up to the brakes and the rear tail light. The rear tail light looks very nice. It is bright, it is clear too. You can't really see it that well in daylight, not that it really matters. And it does have indicators left and right of it, but there is no switch to switch these indicators on. So it looks like it's a light that's really designed more for a motorcycle, but they're using it here on the Commodore. This bike rack comes with it. It's pre-installed, so you don't need to install that yourself. You only really need to just put the handlebars on. That's it really for the bike. And this particular bike rack, well, there's no rating on it for its load capacity, but my guess is it'll probably be about 15 kilos. Seat post does have a quick release and it caters for rider heights of 155 centimeters up to 190 centimeters. The seat has plenty of padding to it. It's very soft and very comfortable. Both the handlebar height and its angle can be adjusted with this bike. The 14 amp hour battery is locked into place. It takes approximately seven hours to fully charge and removing it is not difficult. So you insert the key, you turn it, it pops out a little bit and then you can simply pull that out if you need to charge it in a different location. But you can charge it in the bike because there is a hole right here in the frame that you can just plug it in within the bike. It is 672 watt hours and they use LG or Samsung cells, which is good. If you charge it out of the bike, there is a status indicator LED right here. So red, green, and blue indicating the different levels. So pressing that, you'll be able to tell straight away just what kind of charge level it has, approximately. The frame of the Commodore does check out. They've got extra reinforcing inside here where the battery is. The welds look great. I don't see any weak areas in this frame and an excellent paint finish to it. The bike's weight is quite hefty. It's 34 kilos and it can handle rider weights of up to 150 kilos. The stand does support that 34 kilos, fine, no problems with it. And note that the clearance here from the pedals to the ground isn't that great. So if you do jump down or ride down, should I say, a curb, make sure you get these pedals level. 
because I made the mistake of riding down a curb and I did end up striking them right here. Bit of damage already. As for our brand of tire, they're Chao Yang. I see a lot of them now. It seems to be almost every single bike. The maximum you can inflate them to is 20 PSI and they do have a knobbly, more off-road style tread pattern. And note that the front hub has no quick release, neither does the rear. So at the front, we have 52 teeth. The cassette at the rear has seven speed. It is from Shimano and we have Shimano's Tourney. The display is a king meter and you can see a lot of information just at first glance. So we have our pedal assist levels and they go up to five. You've got the speed trip odometer and even the wattage too, I really like this. And the best part too is the battery life is a percentage, not just those little bars. You're gonna have to guess with other displays. So powers, pedal assist level five, high is four, three is normal, two is low, and then the eco mode, that is the first, and then you can just completely turn it off to zero there, which you'll use maybe on the flat. Now what about the mileage? What kind of range can you get out of it? So I charged it up completely, fully charged before I started out on the ride test that I've been doing. I've covered now 42.8 kilometers, I've got 38%, and I have estimated that I can do probably about 20% more. Normally that last 40% of the battery goes down a bit quicker than the first half uh, because of the voltage, it starts to drop off. So very good range for a 20 inch sized rim bike, getting approximately, I think 60 kilometers with my riding. The bike does use these lock grips. We've got our buttons here for the headlights and the tail light and the horn. Now this is an electric buzzer that's not really that loud. <coughs> Maybe it's some sort of EU law that limits the, the volume of that. The brake levers feel very good and they are adjustable. This European model does not have a throttle. If you get the rest of the world or the US version, then you will have a throttle on the right hand side. You've got the Shimano seven speed gear selector. It works just fine, no problems. And the ride quality now of the Commodore, it is just that as the name states, Commodore, which is comfortable, okay? And it really is, the step through frame makes it easy, uh, the lower profile of it, but the seat height is still good. So it goes uh, and caters for rider heights of 155 centimeters up to about, uh, I think it's 200, not bad. And the front shock, as I pointed out before, it does have plenty of travel. It's one of the better front shocks that I have seen, even though, okay, it doesn't have a brand name behind it. It is very good. So all of the components have checked out that they've used, even though, yeah, the middle shock as well, no brand, but it's still doing a pretty good job. It's just those pedals that I didn't like originally. So uh, as a safety precaution, I got rid of them because I don't want another pair breaking on me. So when you start to pedal, I'm in pedal assist level two here. The speed sensor tends to kick in reasonably quick. It took about a second. Now it's not like a torque sensor. Torque sensors are the best because they are normally just straight away. They give you a very smooth power delivery where this kind of doesn't launch straight into it depending on your pedal assist level. So if I'm in pedal assist level five, then start to pedal. You feel it kicks in, yes, a little bit more powerful, but it's not overly done. It doesn't seem like too much power delivery straight away. Uh, it's reasonably smooth, but again, if it had a torque sensor, then this model would be even better. That's the only real thing too that it's missing is a torque sensor. So in pedal assist level two at the moment is what I've been using. Riding along here, got a, a little bit of rough ground ahead, but that front shock is very good. And even going over this, you feel the rear shock, the fat tires, great. Very smooth. And even the front of this bike, it pops up quite nicely. So you can not really do jumps with it or anything like that, but when you jump down or go up a curb, should I say, it's very easy to pop the front up and that front suspension. Really good, that banging noise is the front mud guard. It slaps about sometimes, even though I do have it screwed into place as tight as possible. So you can see with this frame, with my knees, so much room here, there's no way that even with the tight turn, my knees are gonna strike the handlebars. It really is a comfortable bike to ride and I am in an upright position. So what is the top speed of the bike? Well, it depends on your pedal assist level. So in level three, I get up to about 20 kilometers per hour. Level two is about 17. Level one, it gives me the assistance up to only about, I think it's 14 or 15. And then in level five, that's right up to 25 kilometers per hour, which is limited here because this is an EU legal model here. So the 250 watts and the maximum 
is 25 kilometers per hour. You cannot unlock this model either. And because of the 20 inch size wheels it does have, I do find it very difficult to pedal above 25 kilometers per hour. If you put a lot of effort into it, you push really hard. I can get up to on the flat about 28 kilometers per hour. And if there is a bit of a hill you're going down, that's the only time really that you can get it over the 25 kilometers per hour. It does make it a bit difficult. So the top speed isn't amazing, but typical for 20 inches. And my climb test spot, if you haven't seen my other videos, well this is about a 20 to 25 degree climb. And the bike in pedal assist level five, and in the first gear, I can even put it up gears here, doing a really good job. This has got so much power, even for 250 watts, which apparently it's limited to. Although the screen is telling me it's pulling 900 watts peak here, and I'm going up this with ease. Now, if you've got the US version, you have a 750 watt motor, and it will probably be even better than this, and you'll just rock it up the climbs, but this is effortless. I'm putting only about 10% effort in, and the 90% is all of the Commodore that's doing all of that, the Commodore, and really good. So if I turn off now, pedal assist, put it into off. Um, yeah, this is difficult. <laughs> this, I'm certainly gonna get a very good workout climbing up this without any assistance from the motor. It's a heavy bike too. Braking performance, 180 millimeter hydraulic disc brakes from Dyson. They are very good. So from 30 kilometers per hour, full on braking. Excellent. Very good. Well before this pillar ride here. So this puts it into a category that is in the top. For a 20 inch size fat wheel e-bike, it has one of the best brakes. Dyson brakes have got plenty of bite to them. Very good. The lever feel of the brake levers it's great too, and I can safely stop whenever I need to. Testing the Commodore on some very bumpy ground here. These pavers are all over the place. They're up and down, and it happens to be one of the smoother 20 inch fat wheel deer bikes that I've covered so far. Really good, nice and smooth. The fat tires are doing the job there, but also those no brand shocks, they do work really well. They're soaking up a lot of this, smoothing out the ride. So before I get blown away here, it is super windy. I picked the wrong afternoon to record the final clip here. This is a great bike. So that range, I think what is definitely helping boost it is they're using either LG or Samsung cells, quality cells. Most other brands, if they do not mention the battery cells that they're using, the brand is because they'll be generic Chinese ones. And normally they're nowhere near as good. The capacity is normally a little bit less than what they say it is. This 14 amp hour battery lasts as long as some of the other batteries I've tested out that are 20 amp hours. It's probably aided by the fact that yes, my speed is limited to 25 kilometers per hour. Now the climbing performance, that gets a big thumbs up from me. Excellent, really good. It's going well over that 250 watts. Although when you look at the motor, that is the sticker that's on it. It does state that it's limited to 250 watts. Now, if you've got the US version, that'll be 750 watts. But I saw peaks of 900 watts and the climb, it just rocketed up. It was as good as a thousand watt e-bike, even a 1500 watt e-bike that uh, I'm currently working on reviewing right now. It's very, very good. Speaking of good, the front shock very good it's got to be one of the best too and the braking performance is top of its class for a 20 inch fat wheel e-bike it really does brake well i put it right out there with the gunai mx25 and that pretty much has like motorcycle brakes on it and these ones are they're hydraulic 180 millimeter really good gears no problems rear shock works all right it's got a very stupid brand name to it a very silly name but hey it works it does a better job than others and overall it is a super comfortable bike to ride so the commodore name the commodore name suits it really well the step through design the shocks the suspension very comfortable upright riding position the downsides to the bike well it is expensive it's about four or five hundred euros more than others that i review but you're gaining the brand name cells for the battery the extra range and just a quality frame and overall quality that's higher than other models that i do typically test out so that's what you gain for that extra price not that i'm defending it it should be a little bit lower than what it is uh, the pedals so it came with some cheap foldable pedals that must have been a mistake surely because it's not a foldable 
comparable bike. They should have just put standard alloy pedals on this. And that's why I replaced them straight away. I just don't have confidence in that style of pedal anymore after my wee little accident that I did have of it breaking off one of them. Not this model, but another one. So all up, really good bike here. It gets a thumbs up from me. Oh, and yes, it is heavy. It's 34 kilos. So you don't exactly want to be lifting this up a flight of stairs anytime soon. So thanks for watching. Hope to see you in the next e-bike review. Bye for now.